the uh, former finance minister, Mr. Peter Dumbaram, in Tihar jail after 15 days in the custody of the CBI, now 14 days in jail. Mr. Sidambaram, as I mentioned, in jail number one, ward number nine, as an ordinary inmate, he's been given a separate cell with a cot, some facilities. Now, Kamal Nath's nephew, Ratul Puri, Christian Michel, also in Tihar, uh, in what is the largest prison complex in South Asia. Now, some of the first reactions from the Chidambaram family, coming from Karthi Chidambaram. Let's listen to what he said before we start our debate. This is a process which we are well aware of. I've gone through the same thing last year. So we'll uh, go through this process and uh, I hope to uh, have my father back home very quickly. Even though I don't see any merit in the judicial custody, particularly for events which apparently happened 11 years ago and they're still nowhere even close to filing a charge here. And I reiterate once again that both the air cell maxes and the INX case are non-cases, and they will never see the light of day. They'll never be, I don't think proper charge sheets will ever be framed, and we'll never have trials, but uh, for political reasons, we have to go through this process where, uh, where human critics of the government will be targeted. And all right, well, uh, we'll be joined in a moment by the senior Congress leader and the former uh, law minister, Ashwini Kumar, Deshratan Nigam, with me in the studio, Soli Swarabji, the former Attorney General of India, also joining me in just a few moments from now. Uh, what was the logic or what is the logic in putting somebody behind bars after such a long period in the custody of the Enforcement Directorate? Because many in the Congress, Mr. Chidamram's lawyers have argued that this shouldn't no naturally follow suit. See, the fact remains, the in, it's an in ongoing investigation. And one cannot presume, one, that all evidence has come out. So there is still a possibility, more evidence may come out, there may be more witnesses, which may not be in the knowledge of the investigative agency as of now, but in the knowledge of Mr. Chidambaram. So there is a grave suspicion that being a very powerful person, he may be able to tamper with the evidence, which may still not be in the knowledge of, of the investigative agency or he may tamper with the other evidences also. Right. So this investigative process, uh, in order to conclude, Mr. Chidambaram has been sent to judicial custody, not the police custody as of now. Uh, uh, therefore, so this is the normal process. As Karthi also said, this is the process. So nobody is, is saying or even alleging there is illegality in the process. This has been upheld by the trial court which rejected uh, Mr. Chidambaram's plea and therefore he's been sent to judicial custody. Okay. Uh, do we have Mr. Ashwini Kumar with us as yet? We're just trying to get his line up in a moment. Apologies for that. Or oh, Mr. Soli, Soli Surabji, uh, we'll get that line up uh, in a moment as well. But let me just carry on with you. He's been questioned for 90 hours. He's been asked around 450 questions. And in terms of new information which has now emerged, he was actually confronted by five people. And so there is, a, there is additional information which appears to have emerged now that's not been reported so far on the basis of this questioning. That obviously adds, the CBI believes, to the weight of the case against him. See, the fact remains, CBI or even the court cannot compel CBI to show at this stage any evidence. Even today, the Supreme Court rejected the CBI had given certain uh, documents, confidential documents and information in a sealed cover. Supreme Court said, no, we will not go into and see that. Right. Because that may prejudice the uh, other accused also. So at this stage, whatever is in the knowledge of, is in the knowledge of CBI, it is not in the public domain, nor with the lawyers of the other side also, or the defendant's lawyers. So therefore, the investigative processes have to be very secret. The information is not to be leaked. And there is a grave possibility of Mr. Chidambaram being a very powerful person may be able to tamper the evidences which may is, is still to surface or the witnesses on record. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ashwini Kumar, the senior Congress leader, joins us. Mr. Kumar, thanks very much for being uh, joining us uh, tonight. The CBI says a couple of points. I'd like to get your response. They say that he can tamper with proof. That's why he needs to be behind bars. Uh, there are strong grounds for sending him to jail. Uh, and that after judicial custody, after police custody, judicial custody is a logical step. So on these three points first, how would, how would you respond? Mr. Kumar, can you hear me? All right, apologies. I don't think that line with Ashwini Kumar is up as yet. Uh, let's go across to Soli Surabji. Mr. Surabji, 
the argument that after police custody, judicial custody is a logical step. That's what the CBI has been arguing. In your experience, is that necessarily the case? No, no, it doesn't follow. It is not a necessary conclusion. There must be some... Look, let's be very clear. Law is no respecter of persons. If Mr. A is accused of offences of which Mr. Chidambaran is accused, Chidambaran must have the same treatment. But you don't deny bail unless there is cogent, credible evidence that Mr. Chidambaran is going to have scorned from the country or is going to interfere with the uh, witnesses to try to win them over. Giving an answer which is not favorable to the prosecution does not mean he is not cooperating. Okay. And Chidambana has answered so many questions that if the prosecution can't get anything out of him which is favorable to them, it doesn't mean that he's non-cooperative and they should be denied bail. Because bail, bail not jail is a basic principle of Indian jurisprudence. Yeah. So, therefore, sir, uh, Mr. Surabji, let me ask you a direct question. Do you believe, therefore, that there is an element of a political vendetta involved in this case because he in many cases other than one yeah. has been denied bail in this case he's been questioned for 90 hours 450 questions and then this is something that's happened I'm not criticizing uh, the, the judgment I mean a, a judge has decided this but I, yeah, I what I'm trying to uh, I'm, uh, what I'm trying to ask you is there validity to what the Congress argues when yes, they say that this is political vendetta All right, he can't hear. Would you like to take that question? The point that the Congress is trying to argue is that this is a straightforward case of political vendetta. See, the fact there's no not, charge sheet. Not, uh, not at this stage. There right. cannot be a charge sheet because it's an ongoing investigation and the evidence is still being collected. Some is already there on, on record and some is still in the process of collecting. Now, let us make a distinction. The process of this is beyond the process of questioning. Now, it is at the stage of somebody. D see, ordinarily bail is to be granted, yes. but there are exceptions to it. Yeah. When a person can tamper or influence witness or tamper with witnesses or evidence, then the bail is denied. Yeah. So this is now not the stage of questioning anymore. This is beyond that. So, yeah. And those are the points which are pro provided in law. It has nothing to do with political vendetta. The court applied its mind and then, you know, rejected the bail. Okay. Therefore, political vendetta cannot be there. Okay. It is all within the domain of the court now. Okay, let me just see if we've got that line to Ashwini Kumar. Mr. Kumar, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah. All right. So there are three points among many that I want to talk to you first. As far as the CBI is concerned, they've said that he can tamper with evidence. Secondly, they say that after police custody, judicial custody is a logical step. And thirdly, that he may influence a witness. How would... How would the Congress party, how would you respond to these allegations? Well, let me first of all tell you that I am appearing in my personal capacity as a citizen who believes in the libertarian and the dignitarian values of our constitution, which a free people gave unto themselves. I have a fundamental difficulty with the manner in which this trial has been going on. We know that the prim principal law of the country is the Constitution of India, namely Article 21, which gives to us a life of dignity, which guarantees to each citizen a life of dignity. I have no quarrel with the law taking its course. I have no quarrel with the trial proceeding as per law. But I am not discussing the technicalities of the criminal law here. I am discussing the fundamental assumptions of the Constitution that jail is an exception and bail is the rule. Mr. Chidambaram has been in custody for 14 days. The nature of evidence, as far as I have been able to gather from media reports, is not such that is already not in the custody of the investigative authorities. They, need, they may need to confront him with certain people, which they can always do. They should have done it in the 14 days. They have, the sir. reason that they kept him for 14 days is that that is the maximum that is permissible under the law. What, what, what happens, therefore, to Article 21? What happens to that cardinal principle of jurisprudence which assumes us to be innocent until we are convicted? 
the way the criminal processes are functioning today imply that the moment an accusation is made, you are condemned in the public mind. Look at the trial by media that has been happening in the last several days. Look at the language that the anchor, some of the anchors and some of the TV uh, people are using for the man who has been in positions of some importance. I grant that law is no respecter of persons, but at least give him the basic dignity, his no, right but to sir, what the media does his and, right uh, to and, and to you know, I mean, no, tabloid media, that's a separate point. Acquitted. It's a, le it's a legal what issue, happens? sir. And, 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 and you know, if it's defamatory, then Mr. Chidambaram can look at that. But in terms of the evidence in the case, you raised a point. Well, let me tell you, I'm sorry, Vishnu, Vishnu, you, You are talking about a tabloid issue and a legal issue. Access to justice through fair trial is a constitutional question. No, but I'm I'm it not sure a, that I'm not sure the case, I'm not sure the judges in are influenced by what country. happens on television debates. I mean, I'm just making that one point. But Mr. Kumar, on what you said, you said that he has not been confronted what, by the look, accused look, and I'm witnesses. Not, I, 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 but yeah. the point, what we are learning today, Mr. Kumar, is that he has been confronted by five accused and witnesses. A charge sheet is likely by the 20th of September. Uh, and that uh, he could influence banks abroad, right? Which is why one of the reasons they believe that he needs to be behind bars. So three further allegations. Again, would you like to respond to what the CBI is saying? Well, as far as the confrontation with people, are, uh, with witnesses is concerned, that only goes to strengthen my point that that part has been done. He has been confronted with the witnesses. As far as tempering of evidence is concerned, merely on an ipse dixit or a statement of an investigative officer, you can't curtail the liberty of a person beyond, beyond, beyond a particular reasonable time. That's the only limited point I'm trying to make. You can't invoke a technicality of a criminal legal procedure to defeat the constitutional guarantee of liberty, reputation, and dignity. Please understand, the history, the history of oppression all over the world makes a move in, in a creeping manner. There's, there's no frontal assault as such. Everything is done in the name of law. And let me tell you, I have to make this clear. I am not taking a partisan view. I am not speaking today as a Congress spokesperson. I, I, I am not casting aspersions or imputing motives on anyone. I am concerned as a citizen of this country that if the jail versus bail principle that has not been departed from uh, jurisprudentially is going to be upheld in this country, then this kind of uh, prosecution uh, is is wholly impermissible. Incarceration of a okay. person's liberty even for one hour is impermissible. All right. I am asking you a simple question and give me 30 seconds. Has any TV journalist, has any media person, has any government uh, 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 apologized to people who are hauled up in 2G and in a number of other cases? Recently, Mr. S.C. Gupta has been acquitted. Who was who was no, actually sir, so most, distraught most, that he told the judge to sir, jail, again it's the entire issue the of how this is reported is, in some is media, which I, I, I'm sure is 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 it's, it's extreme in our country, which is unfortunate. But as far as this case is concerned, again the judges shouldn't or aren't looking at what happens on television. That's defamation. Arguably, that's a separate issue. But Mr. Surabji, let me come to you on the larger point that's been I, mentioned I'm, by uh, by Ashwini no, Kumar. I'm not saying no, no, one second, sir. I've got other panelists. I just want to go across to Mr. Surabji before I wrap this up. Mr. Surabji, the point that he's saying is that there are larger constitutional issues over here. There is a certain uh, system of dignity. Uh, there is a certain belief in basic rights which individuals have, irrespective of the allegations that they have against them. On the other hand, if the CBI or the ED were to argue that they have an open and shut case, they are filing a charge sheet within a, in, within a couple of days, on the 20th of this month, uh, that he might be able to influence people outside the country, then how does, how, how does a ju judge, a court, actually balance these entire issues? It, it cannot be one or the other. It has to be the judgment of a particular person. But there must be some cogent evidence, credible evidence, not mere speculative evidence. What's the idea of the prosecution saying they were open and shut case? They have not had a charge sheet so far. 
I don't understand this. No one will be safe. Isn't, let me just be clear. Bail not jail is a basic principle. It's not absolute. It's not absolute. I agree. It can be departed from if you say the man is going to scorn, going to leave India, he's a flight risk, right. or he's going to interfere with other witnesses. There's nothing of the kind. The only thing is he's not given them answers which are favorable to the prosecution. So on that ground, the charge is he's not cooperating, he's non-cooperative. That's a nonsensical thing. All right. Okay. I think this is a very dangerous attitude. That's, that's a point that, that keeps coming up. And that point is that not providing an answer satisfactory enough for the investigators shouldn't be seen as a presumption of guilt. Uh, that there's a long process before you decide somebody is guilty or not. See Isn't that a valid no, point though? See, the, I think we are mixing many issues. We are mixing the questioning stage and then the stage which has crossed the stage of questioning. All those things are over now. Questioning is over. And, and whatever information they had to seek, they may have got it, they may not have got it. Now the, it's the next stage, then what? Is he capable of, uh, you know, disturbing the evidence, tampering with it? It is that stage we have come. And the court in its wisdom thought he is capable of doing that. Okay. So therefore, let's not mix the two question of non-cooperation in questioning and the stage of, uh, you know, tampering. with. These are two different stages. All right. Well, one way or the other, 14 days uh, custody in Tihar jail. Uh, what are these, these points which are so uh, significant against uh, Mr. Chidambaram, uh, will there be justice in this case one way or the other? Uh, gentlemen, I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us.